Hello again, we are in the stock business model and we are talking about why having a great technology or new product is not enough these days. We have come to the part where we are now reviewing actual, actual business models of companies that we know. And I'm starting here with a business model that is behind a brand that has really become known around the globe. Um, it has created new products and services that have not been out there on the market. And uh, yeah, it has actually created something like a new market, I would say. And it is Airbnb. Um, I have known this company for a very long time. And um, a lot of the investors, the very early ones that have been uh, invited to become investors actually said no to that uh, business model because they didn't believe in it at all. They didn't believe that um, people would allow complete strangers to come and stay with them in their house. Um, but this has turned out to be different. Um, and uh, I'm sure there's many of them out there who are um, really regretting their answers these days. But what I also didn't know, and I mean, this is uh, actually, you know, coming back to the uh, iceberg. Um, I always thought that Airbnb is only charging or taking a commission from the price that people pay when they um, yeah, book themselves into somebody's uh, home as a guest, but it's actually uh, taking a commission from both sides. And um, this is interesting because uh, I've been following this company for a very long time in the meantime. And this year in 2020, there was of course a big disruption with uh, all the, the travel industry being basically stopped. And one of the changes that was uh, proposed afterwards and also maybe implemented in the meantime is that uh, this money, these economic streams behind should become visible, which is something I uh, very much welcome. So what can we learn from this? I mean, this is about, um, an online community and a broker model. So this is a combination. Now we can see the very first time that the business model patterns that you have been reading about in the St. Gallen uh, Business Model Navigator uh, have been combined here. I will leave it like this now here because we all know this company and you can uh, read more about it yourself. I would like to continue with uh, something that is very similar. Um, this is actually an organization that I've also followed for quite some time that is using exactly the same business model, which means that they take commission from both uh, parties that they are bringing together in their platform. Um, in this case, Etsy is about products and I don't know if it's about services as well, uh, but yeah, I see the word weddings here. So um, it's unique creations from artists mainly. And um, yeah, they are bringing together unique products from creators uh, from all around the world uh, to a market. And this is actually the same as uh, Airbnb is doing in their business model. And I have uh, chosen these two examples to point out to you that um, it's unfortunately not always obvious to see the business model behind an organization. Um, so we do, do need to take the time to really research and um, yeah, take whatever material we find about business models to understand what we could do in our own context. I hope that made sense. Let's take another example. I'm a little bit, yeah, not so sure anymore about uh, business models that 
put the collection of data in the center of their activities, uh, selling the data to interested organizations. I hope um, and you know would put that as a very very uh, you know warm recommendation for anybody who is uh, interested in a, in using this kind of a model. Um, to create a community that actually delivers value to the people and uh, respect people's rights to their own data. Of course, this is a topic that has to be taken care of. And I'm bringing you exam an example here that I actually like a lot. It's called Patients Like Me. And it's a platform for people with certain kind of uh, rare uh, sicknesses um, that can find out there that they are not alone, which is of course a very very big relief for anybody uh, who is struggling with something um, that they feel left alone, maybe from from their doctors. This organization uh, collects data from the people that share their data on this uh, community platform and sells it to pharma industry. Um, yes, why am I bringing this to you? Um, there's of course a lot of uh, potential in yeah, big data applications. And there's also a lot of um, benefit that can be delivered um, to the people you are collecting the data from, but it can also be really misused. Um, that's where I'm coming back to our very, very start where I was talking you, uh, to you about your critical engineering um, manifesto that is there. Um, yeah, take this into your account. And of course, um, everything can look differently and positive in the end um, when we have good, honorable, ethical intentions behind our business models. Here's another company that I like to present to you. It's also coming from uh, a similar area. This is uh, 23andMe. It's a company that has created uh, a DNA scan that they are selling to um, customers. And they also work with the data. But here you see it's a combination between data and an actual product. Um, this is the fact that I wanted to point out to you again. Um, you have no limitations of you know, how many uh, different exchanges of value actually happen or how that product uh, and the service or the combination of product and service look like. You can see here again how uh, the exchange of information, the exchange of uh, economic value takes place. It's again a combination, as I've said. Um, big data is part of it. Um, they have created a really interesting uh, promotional video that I loved. Um, I don't know if you have ever come across them, uh, but they had like a group of people um, that all did that DNA test and then they showed um, who is related to whom um, and uh, made that uh, yeah, part of an advertisement for actually traveling to uh, your new cousins that you have found in, in new countries that maybe you have never uh, visited before that is actually also part of your own DNA. So this is a, um, a message that is uniting people across the globe, uh, which is something, of course, that uh, is uh, in my mission. That's why I looked up this company as well. So that's an interesting combination, a product plus the data that comes with it. Now I would like to show you an example of a business model that redefines current models of how your industry maybe works right now. And uh, here it is. This is a company called Friendsurance. And as you 
have noticed this is uh, the industry we are talking about is the insurance industry and um, insurance sys are you know developed based on on risk calculations and that is actually here um, the backbone that has been changed here so they're creating a community and then they're spreading the risk um, that is normally only on on that person that insurer that is uh, you know your customer in a contract and um, they're spreading the risk here to a bigger group of people and that completely changes of course uh, the models that are behind um, these kind of insurances. Interesting, um, not as easy really to understand and probably needing a big technological system, of course, that is able uh, to create this product. And now I'm going even a level deeper here where the profit and non-profit um, has been tied together. This is another insurance company. I've never heard of them until today, uh, but I needed to bring them into our session right away. It's called Lemonade. Um, and it's also an insurance company. They actually offer, I think, home insurance company and also pet insurance. Um, but what they do here is that um, they are actually giving back excess um, yeah, funds that has basically um, not been going into payouts um, to charity, to uh, nonprofit organizations. And um, it is really, really interesting to see that um, based on their study, women are more likely to buy an insurance from such a, a company than any other kind of an insurance. So this is a, a great news for me that it's possible to connect um, the goal of you know, making profit and the non-profit part in one business model and on top of uh, this here in an industry that is yeah you know not that easy to disrupt so please look at this example uh, in your materials and see if that can make any sense for the product and service that you are building Here, there's a little more detail about it. Um, yeah, on top of the disruptive factor that I've been describing, it's also working really, really fast. Uh, it is completely this uh, um, transparent and open with its fact, and it is working in this uh, for the social good. This is how it works. The nonprofit part and the profit part. And yeah, money left in the pool is redistributed to the nonprofit uh, partner in the equation. Coming to uh, another business model that I would like to um, yeah, explain to you based on a real world example. Here there's one which has been used for services that integrates the demand side in a flexible way. And here this is uh, the acting organization here is a city. Um, it's about San Francisco, a uh, different way of um, charging um, inhabitants and visitors for parking. And it's actually a demand responsive parking pricing model that has been created, which means um, there is a system um, that is calculating a different price for a respective parking spot based on the current need for this parking spot. So I, I find this very interesting because it's a public service um, and it really helps uh, a city to deliver 
yeah, I, I, I need a demand responsive uh, system for um, you know working with that space, that parking space that is needed um, in different times. I have uh, taken the time to read into it. This was um, a pilot project and it was successful and actually adopted by the city and is now fully operational in San Francisco. Now I'm going again into that same direction, something that is actually a, a public service. And I'm also picking this example because this has been coming up several times um, in the programs that people had this idea of bundling different uh, transportation modes into one ticket let's say. And yes, this is already existing. So I'm really happy to present this to you. Uh, it's called the WIM app. And it is a service that brings together different ways of traveling. So you can connect air, uh, rail, underground, metro, bicycle, bus, all in one ticket. It's uh, subsumized as a, with a term called M-A-S-S, -S, so Mobility as a Service. And uh, this company originates uh, from fin Finland. And you can see uh, I've taken the screenshot here um, from the, with the city of Helsinki. And uh, I'm really happy to say that they are moving into different cities. And Vienna is one of the cities where these kind of tickets can be bought. So check it out. Um, look into how this is working. Um, there is a lot more to read about the systems behind. Uh, I think this has been attempted for quite a long time and it has always come up um, when we are talking with uh, young engineers like you are in you know, what could be uh, something that uh, is an improvement for your own city and for the environment and for the globe. So you can see here that the system is basically um, designed as such that uh, the company buys tickets from the transportation companies and resells them in forms of subscriptions to the customers. Sounds easy, but definitely needs a critical mass. Um, so this is actually a factor that you need to consider that uh, maybe that business model that you are aiming for um, can only really work efficiently after you have reached critical mass. I think this was enough examples at this point, uh, and I hope that it, it has become very clear to you that this skill that you're diving into right now, business model thinking, entrepreneurial thinking, is something that you will need um, in wherever organization uh, you might uh, start to work or that you might uh, create yourself. Uh, this is the challenge that we are all up against. And I would like to point you to one article that is also linked in your resources about um, six questions that will help you actually to define this business model or to innovate an existing business model. There's three points that are mentioned here um, that actually allow you know, you to innovate on a business model level. It's about adding novel activities is number one here. Um, number two is linking activities in new ways. And number three is changing one or more parties that perform any of those activities. So this is your uh, knobs to turn 
when you have your business model canvas in front of you, uh, maybe filled out in a very traditional way, maybe based on an example that is already out there, um, maybe based on a prevailing business model that is used in the industry you're in, and then you can take parts of them apart and replace them with novel ways, new partners or novel activities to just turn things upside down. So please dive into this article. Thank you very much for listening. Do replay this. Um, I know this was a lot of information at once and please write down the questions that you have in your mind right now and the questions that come in the next couple of minutes after this video is over. Thank you, see you on the other side.